it balances the hind foot. Any degree of valgus and or varus, varus is very worrisome, it can affect the ankle indirectly. And it maintains the length of the lateral column. That is why sometimes, in spite of the varus of the varus malvinian, we look at the foot from behind and we are able to see the too many toes sign because the forefoot has gone, in, gone into a little bit of valgus. Now the radiological parameters which we should know about the calcaneum, the talocalcaneal angle, again, because of the, uh, um, our proficiency of uh, continuous treatment of CTEV, we know this uh, talocalcaneal angle, then we know the pitch angle, which should be around 30 degrees, the uh, angle that the calcaneum forms with the floor, and then we know the uh, declination angle, which it makes with the perpendicular. Now, beyond that, we should also know the talocalcaneal height, the height of the navicular from the ground, and the height of the uh, cuboid from the ground. What happens when a fracture occurs? And this scissor closes. And because the scissor closes, the talus gets dorsiflex and often impinges on the anterior part of the, uh, of the tibia. And the calcaneal cuboid joint might also get affected. Now, it is important to know this because what does the patient suffer from once he gets a malunion? There is loss of heel height, there is heel pain, and this is for variable causes. It could be a heel exostosis, it could be sural nerve um, damage, it could be posterior tibial nerve damage, it could be fat pad damage. Now there is widening of heel, there is subfibular impingement, there are peroneal. have to try and find out, is it his peroneal tendons, is the subtalar joint, is it the tibiotalar impingement? Is it the uh, heel which is giving him pain? And this can be done by a good clinical examination and differential local blocks, where we, if we suspect an area, put a bit of xylocaine there and assess whether the patient has any pain relief. Now, radiology of a malunited calcaneum is almost akin to the radiology of a fresh, uh, uh, freshly broken calcaneum. That is, this, we should take a weight bearing view in this case, which is different from the fresh calcaneum, and it should be an anterior posterior 30 degree oblique and lateral views of the, of the ankle. Then, anterior posterior and oblique views of the foot because you have. For a very excellent presentation, kindly be seated on here itself. And you have right. And he'll be flying to Delhi and then driving to Agra to give his another talk. So, this scientific meeting is very serious. Is simply shown by this because of it could manage this meeting here. It's a challenge because it is difficult to fix, but it's something which we should accept because it really can take your creativity as a trauma surgeon to its limit and give you a very good result provided you understand the fracture, the mechanics and then go forward to treat it. This man described the Huffa fracture first in 1904 and he's still are discussing that is a testament to how difficult this fracture is. It's a coronally isolated, coronally oriented fracture of either femur condyle, so you can have a medial Huffa and a lateral Huffa and it's classified as 33B3. I think we all are clear about the classifications. It mainly affects young adults. It's a bimodal distribution. Older people with low energy trauma and osteoporotic bones and young people high energy trauma especially motor vehicle accidents nobody knows how it occurs actually there is no nobody has found out a specific mechanism but it is postulated that a twisted knee producing vertical shear force on either or both condyles is the culprit behind the injury but what is important is that lateral fractures lateral huffas are three times more common than medial fractures probably because of the physiological valgus in the knee they are often associated with inter or supracondylar distal femoral fractures. So we must be cautious that if we have a Hoffa, find out if there is any associated injury. CT scans are the workhorse for diagnosis of this fracture, especially the coronal shear component, which can easily be missed. And four fifths of them occur as a result of motor vehicle accidents. There have been classifications for we all think of Hoffa fracture. We have pigeonholed it. Okay, one is the most difficult fracture type to treat. Uh, type 3 fractures, they are, these are basically unicondylar fractures with only a small anterior shear thing, a uh, small anterior fragment which is left behind with the shaft. So basically the whole condyle is involved and because the whole condyle is involved, it has adequate soft tissue attachments and therefore there is no, not much risk because of this coronal oblique orientation. But you can see a double contour sign, I can show you here. You can see a double contour sign here on the lateral uh, condyle. 
this is a pathognomonic sign for Hoffa fracture in, in AP of uh, uh, and there you can find double Hoffa's, single Hoffa's and sometimes Hoffa's when you did not even suspect of. So as with any intraarticular fracture, anatomical reduction, adequate stability, enabling early mobilization. There has to be biological fixation, the interosseous blood supply is uh, of the positive femoral uh, condyle is tenuous and usually disrupted. So the fragment and the fragment is usually covered entirely by articular cartilage. So that is one uh, factor against simple biological fixation. Large number of series, all of them are small with few cases and therefore there is not much literature support for what you are going to do and there is actually no consensus among all these studies. So literature does not support much uh, in one way or the other. Non-operative management is only good for people who, who you know are never going to walk again, who are so old, so uh, fragile that basically surgery is indicated for uh, medical contraindications to operate treatment. The patient is already a paraplegic, has fallen down or a quadriplegic. And these are things as side is spare, extraticular, you can use a bowler frame for six weeks for by partial weight bearing if the patient is able to walk. But all these will give compromised results. The best way to do it is to do it by surgery. You can have, uh, do, there are many approaches described, swashbuckler, tarpo, lateral approach. We'll come to that in a few, this thing. But what is important is this. This is an intraarticular fracture, gentlemen. Give miss a miss. Do not use minimal invasive surgery. You need to open the fracture, you need to uh, do proper reduction, you need to do proper fixation. Open it and do it. For type 1 fractures, the best approach is a lateral uh, approach to the distal femur where you can see, with, go right down to the uh, joint line so that you can see the articular reduction through one window and you can fi do fixation through another window. Otherwise, a parapetal approach will fail. Screw. And that's the final for operative picture as well as the x-ray picture. Similar case which with an associated uh, uh, fracture in the shaft has been neutralized by long screws and the plate. You can also use two plates. You can use one lateral plate and one posterior, which is not very difficult fracture to do. You use a pa lateral parapetal approach, use a contoured plate and you can also use. Now these fractures are usually rotated because of the pull of the gastrocnemius. So you have to use something like a tension band wire, get them to derotate and then finally fix them. Don't use an uncontrolled plate because then it, you will miss the buttressing effect. So use a plate like this, similar fracture, similar fixation. Post-operatively, a prop, uh, active and assisted range of motion should be started immediately, but weight bearing should be delayed by about 8 to 12 weeks. I normally uh, allow weight bearing only after 3 months. Recognize arterial damage, joint stiffness if exercises are not uh, performed well, and non-union, which is rare. Uh, and if associated with knee stiffness, treatment is difficult and you need to bone graft them later on. But don't ever do this. Now this is a uh, fracture supposedly fixed by a plate, distal femur locking plate, but the entire hoffa is completely missed and it is floating around in the knee. So it's a challenge definitely worth accepting. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you, Dr. Sovi. Okay. Like, there is any level of serum lactate level also? I give recommendation by the pediatric uh, orthopedic society is uh, CRP is the most uh, sensitive tool as far as the blood parameter is concerned. And then when it comes to radiology, it is MRI. And then when it, the aspirate is these three are mandatory. At other levels you can use, but these three are definitely mandatory to work up a case of acute hemorrhagic osteomyelitis so that you don't miss them in the early phase where you can treat them completely without any later morbidity. Well, uh, what is the final message as far as treatment is concerned? Uh, how much delay you would like to take place? You will prefer first 24 hours, you will wait for 24 hours. As in many diseases of the earlier, the disease is treated the better. But if you miss the first 40 to 70 hours, then the morbidity is definitely higher and all the study. They lock it to the bone. Yes. How do they lock it to the bone? They have a different diameters. Oh, and you are talking about Herbert, 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 not exactly Herbert screw. Acutrac kind of screw. Yeah. Okay. Acutrac is not available in India. Uh, 
there are there are there are very calculated compression screws which are available the whole and point. they give very effective compression yeah, that okay. and immediately yeah. and uh, once you fix them they are very very effective yeah. and then you can just and neutralize the uh, plates you can actually use them i have never found the need to actually use them very uh, uh, a lot because compression is usually not a problem in a hop hop bracket in the problem is making the uh, fragment stay there and not allowing it to migrate proximally that is the basic thing that is why the, you have to neutralize that shear thing that is why a fixation with screws only for a hop hop fracture is liable to fail so you would always use a plate to buttress that fragment or to suspend your screws from that plate. because otherwise you will not be able to neutralize that shear He usually displaces on the posterior side. So dealing it from anterior and holding with the hanging screws probably don't give you that stability. They have to be buttressed back from uh, posterior lateral or posterior medial side. That gives you because when you are flexing it beyond 90 degree or 70 degree, the whole force goes to the hofa and at times you have cracks in the hofa which you don't see practically if you don't have a CT. Okay. So it's always better to put with some reconstruction on the posterior side. What's your take on that? You can do that if you've got a fairly large metaphyseal fragment. If your entire hopper is intra-articular, then you will not be able to do that. If you've got a type, that is why type 2 hoppers are the ones which are the main problem. Otherwise, you can put, like I showed in a couple of slides, you can put a posterior plate and you can buttress it very nicely. But then you need to have a non-articular portion of bone on which to place your plate. If you've got only an articular fragment, if the whole fragment is caught by articular cartilage, there is only one way actually you can do it, that use the lateral side or the medial side depending on which hopper it is, which is non-articular. You can't put a plate on the articular surface. So you will have to suspend it. And that is why it is important not to allow these patients to bear weight. Yes, sir. I, can I have a comment? Uh, Just push, your, push it a little into the hand infection in orthopedics. Uh, well, now we hand over the mic yes, to the container. So I did do. He has taken a lot of effort to come over here. Dr. G.R. Meer also, please. Amit, we are proud to see you. Amit has worked a lot to come over here. This is why we have so many people who are saying that your love, 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 your love. Thank you, Doctor. The speakers for this session will be Dr. Sunil Kurkarni, Dr. Amul Singh, and my good friend Dr. Anand Nigam. Over to the chairperson, sir. We have a very difficult topic. Uh, which will be covered by Dr. Sunil Kulkarni, who is an authority on these upper, upper end tibia fractures. Uh, complex fractures of the upper end tibia have either very good results or very poor results, and the patient can end up with a knee replacement in later years if the surgery is not done well. So we need to understand the complex anatomy, how uh, coronal split fractures occur, how postromedial fractures occur, postrolateral, that how we should focus on them. So I invite Dr. Sunil Kulkarni to enlighten us on this topic. Dr. Sunil Kulkarni is also a, a big faculty on AO trauma courses. He speaks at um, various trauma and uh, we are happy to have him here today. Uh, thank you, Chairperson, and thank. Uh, he's better than an infective one. So, his malignated tibial plateau fracture is easier to manage than a stiff knee. So, that is a, a very good saying it, and it has been proved by time. So, principles of definitive fixation are we have to fully understand the fracture, especially the uh, 3D construct. So we have to have a CT in that. And automatically restore the articular surface, no structural articular defects, and stable fixation maintained. And the new way thinking is due to the mechanism. You can explain with the mechanism, which is varus extension is medial column, the vulgus extension is lateral column and the flexion injury in posterior column. So you can make out how the injury has occurred and you can plan it. So de-action that plan and that formation of fracture and it is easier to manage uh, by this <coughs> classification.
So decision making is always a soft issue. We'll give a wrinkle sign and then you first try to fix it on the medial side and then go to the lateral side. So the span, scan and plan, that's the dictum. You have to first span it with the external fixator. Uh, see the blisters there, you get soft tissues. In this condition, you should not operate. Wait till 10 or 10 days, whatever it is more than, you can get a good skin, then you can plan it. So approaches are standard. We can have the workhorse is an interlateral approach, uh, which we have uh, sub-meniscal resection. You have to elevate the meniscus to see the depressed lateral condyle and can go to the posterior lateral fragment. So Schatzker 1 and 2 we can treat with the simple way, uh, the split depression fracture with the lateral tibial condyle, the Schatzker 2. And this is a standard way of treating it which you get a good depression, you can see the CT and you can plan it and that way you can elevate this fragment, depressed fragment on that, on the lateral split and you can see actually the depressed fragment. You have to see it, it is intra-articular fracture, you can't just won't rely on your image views whether it is related. You have to see it exactly and then plan it. Uh, the Schatzker 3 is also again a split and pure depression. So you will, that also requires a lot of elevation and you have to see it actually it is elevated and align that fragment. So this is a pure depression. You can fix with this after the elevation of this fragment. So that is a very important aspect. You can come to the conclusion. And then you can plan in that, that way, you have to elevate with the depressed fragment with the fragment is elevated. You can see it actually the elevation of the fragment which is depressed inside and then you can plan it align the, with the other joint surface. So Schatzker 4 is again a very grievous injury because it starts with the medial condyle. So many low profile plates, it are not uh, abutting to the skin or damaging any skin. So you have to uh, use a standard Indian low profile plates which are enough to stabilize these fragments. So while going to the review of 140 literature, we have started doing a study on this, whether this depressed fragment on the lateral side, whether it requires any bone graft, bone substitute, which is a huge $3 billion market in the United States for bone substitutes, whether it is necessary to our, fill our patients to do that. So lateral condyle, there is no need to put any allograft, any bone graft, any bone substitute to the print. So take home message is fully understand the fracture which is essential for decision making, definitive fixation. Approach the selection, fixation should be into account of soft tissues, mechanism of injury and 3D morphology of the fracture. And 3D column classification provides... Some years back I was in Trauma Khan listening to this topic of distal femur fracture and now one of my friends sitting beside me told me that it is fractures like a bomb. Then this topic was allotted to me this year, the bomb in a shell. What will you do as an orthopedic surgeon? Well, this accounts for about 7% of all the femur fractures and there is a bimodal age distribution. Elderly because of the manifolds and the young adult due to high energy trauma. Most distal fracture, femur fractures are the result of a severe axial load with a virus, valgus or rotational force and because of this lots of different types of catastrophic injuries are there in the patient and many of the time the patient comes to us with polytrauma associated. Well, there are lots of muscles and soft tissue attached all around and because of this there are some of the deformities associated. Cordyceps will lead to shortening, <coughs> adductors will lead to virus and gastrocnemius will lead to recurrentum. So we have to address all this preferred implant for the complex fracture I always call a bomb in a shell. Preferred implant versus lateralis leads to fibrosis later on but for seeing the condyles in a much more better position, this is a good approach. This will prevent the virus collapse. I have done it after the, attending that conference and luckily I am getting a good result. And it hardly takes two or three minutes after fixation of the plate. The post-operative treatment plans keep the knee into... Thank you, Dr. Amulisan. Uh, for um, enlightening us about the... Uh, now I request Dr. Anand Nigam from Khan. The first topic is after good didactic surgical part. But of course, it is one of the essential parts of our orthopedic is concerned. The reason being, 
as Professor Yadav has said, that to have a good result, the seed in the soil has to be good. And if the seed is good, the plant will grow. And the soil is bad, the plant will not grow. So both things have to be in harmony with each other to have a wonderful result. What is osteoporosis? Osteoporosis is basically a disorder. Coming to the secondary osteoporosis, there are a plethora of causes which lead to the secondary osteoporosis. There are many factors which are some are modifiable and some are non-modifiable. In non-modifiable, as like the older age, female gender, but the most important are the steroids and antiepileptics. Um, antiepileptics they are one of the most major causes, and while taking a history in osteoporosis, one has to take in, uh, into account. Coming to the modifiable risk factors, alcohol, smoking, poor nutrition, vitamin D deficiency, insufficient exercise, which, are, which is one of the major causes now. And of course, weight-bearing exercises I'm talking about. There are many causes in childhood, basically bed rest due to chronic illness, and up to there are many and severe chronic pediatric diseases in India are one of the major causes. In a late adulthood, the hypogonadism is a major cause. One more question. Dr. Kulkarni, what is the role of uh, hybrid fixators in complex box material practice? Hybrid fixer, you mean to say laser or fixator along with the yeah, cancerous fixer, host? Conventional fixator with the minimal in, in, internal fixation. I, I, uh, <laughs> that's a funny story again. In 1994, we published uh, in Journal of uh, Journal of Trauma, European Trauma, with two cancerous screws and the laser fixator around. But it has miserably failed everywhere. So it, it cuts through, the wires cut through immediately. So because even patients don't listen to us, they just wet there. And then we have seen so many wires cut through the joint. So we don't recommend nowadays for any fixator around any metaphasic area. We have time for one last question. Sir, you have said that you use very minimal technique to fix up the joint. The interlateral approach, very small approach, subministral approach. You elevate joint, whatever it is, you do two temporary K wires, two, three K wires. Split on the lateral side, you can fix with a rat plate. And the medial side, which is very important, is on the medial side. Posterior medial and medial. There the stripping is has to be very meticulous. So there, there, also there I don't strip it. I just pass the plate yeah, and just put it. The medial side you don't require much of uh, because it's a big bone. It's a very yes. hard, strong bone. You put one or two lakh screws that will suffice. But you need to give a buttress to prevent virus. That's very important. So you, you give a small buttress plate, it will give. You, I, what I do now, we put these two shanks which already been put by the spanning picture. I don't remove it on the on the table. I just put it. If required, you can put a, a remote distractor and and just distract it. So you will get a good alignment. Don't remove these shanks pins. They will also help your uh, assistant to give good traction on both sides. Medial side little bit of index technique does help and avoid Medial side is little forgiving if you put plate it. I have so many different implants and there are failures. And if I tell you, now stop doing all those implants, follow all the recommendations. So what can you do to avoid all these failures? Where even if everything goes wrong, you are saved. Or there can be a situation where you have not done everything correctly, but with a little bit of luck, you are saved. This is what is happening. But when it comes to the question of science, you have to have a passion to do the best possible. You have to have an open mind. And you have to develop the technical skill. So let me start with the reduction. Because the reduction, reduced fracture is going to be my biomechanically more stable. You come across such fracture, don't try to pull more axially. Just try to give a lateral thigh traction or sometimes you may use a blunt instrument just to get reduction of such into susceptible fractures of the entro uh, medial border of the femur. We need to see in our fractures where there is a bag of bones and we put this periosteal, I mean perineal post at eccentric and all those go more laterally and that ultimately will give rise to a biomechanical failure because there is a, so much of a gap. For that, you have need to fix it first and then you can adapt and use